Lynn Lampman here, pastor of St. James United Church of Christ in Havertown, Pennsylvania, to talk with you today about what to say and do for the dying. The aim, whenever possible, is for the one who is dying to have a good death, which means what is a good death for me would not be a good death for you. Some want to, want to be alone. Others want to be surrounded by family and friends when they die. Someone may want to have a few last words with people she loves and take care of personal matters. Another may want to die at home and receive only pain management. And others will choose to stay in the hospital and take every treatment available. So let us work toward that person having a good death as they define it. Generally speaking, people who are dying need care in four areas. Physical comfort, mental and emotional needs, spiritual issues, and practical tasks. There are ways to make a person who is dying feel more comfortable. Discomfort can come from a variety of problems, pain, breathing issues, skin irritation, digestive issues, temperature sensitivity, and fatigue. Helpful end-of-life care includes helping the dying person manage any mental or emotional distress. They might be feeling depressed or anxious. Encouraging conversation about feelings might be beneficial. A counselor or medication might prove relief as well. A dying person might have some specific fears and concerns. They might fear the unknown or worry about those left behind. It is good to remember that the most helpful listening is done with an open heart and a closed mouth. Looking at the person who is speaking and leaning slightly forward, all say non-verbally that you are interested in every word the person has to share. At times, the one who is dying may choose not to talk, and that silence needs to be respected. Then there is the simple, simple act of physical contact. Holding hands, a touch, or a gentle massage can make a person feel connected to those he or she loves. It can be very soothing. Warm your hands by rubbing them together or running them under warm water. Try to set the kind of mood that is most comforting for the dying person. What has he or she always enjoyed? Maybe they spent their whole life wanting to have time with just one or two people, and yet others love parties and thus could possibly find it comforting to be surrounded by a lot of friends and family. Research shows low music and soft lighting are soothing at the time of death. Listening to music can also evoke memories that those present can share. Keeping distracting noises like television and radio to a minimum is important. People nearing the end of life may have spiritual needs as compelling as their physical concerns. Spiritual needs may involve finding meaning in one's life and ending disagreements with others if possible. Many find solace in their faith, praying, talking with someone from other religious community, their religious community, reading religious texts, or having them read to them, read to them, and listening to religious music may bring comfort. We may want to say, I know this is a difficult time. My faith has helped me through hard times in the past. Do you have a source of spiritual support that might be of help to you now? Would you like me to pray for you? If no is given as an answer, you must respect their wishes. Friends and family can talk to the dying about the importance of their relationship. Family and friends who can't be present could send a recording of what they would like to say or a letter to be read aloud. Sharing memories of good times is another way some people find peace near death. This can be comforting for everyone. Hearing is the last sense to go. So even when a person cannot verbally respond to you, they may still be hearing you. It is never too late to say how you feel or to talk about fond memories. Always talk to, not about, the person who is dying. 
And then there are the physical tasks that need to be done at the end of life, both to relieve the dying person and to support the caregiver or caregivers. Everyday tasks can be a worry for someone who's dying and they can overwhelm the caregiver. So we should offer to help do small daily chores around the house, picking up the mail or newspaper, doing a load of laundry, feeding and walking the family pet, taking children to soccer practice, can provide a much needed break. A dying person might be worried about who will take care of things when he or she is gone. Offer reinsurances. I will take care of your African violets and make sure they are watered. Jessica has promised to take care of Bandit. Reminding the dying person that his or her personal affairs are in good hands can also bring comfort. Let me just say here that it is far more helpful to make a specific offer than a general one. We can say to the family, let me help with, and suggest bringing meals for the caregiver or babysitting. If you can help specifically, you can help schedule friends and family to help with small jobs or bringing in meals. This can allow the immediate family to give their full attention to the dying person. If you are a primary caregiver, try to ask for help when you need it. Don't hesitate to suggest a specific task to someone who offers to help. And last but not least, let me encourage the dying person and their family and friends to do the five things. These five things help us stay focused on saying the things that are most important. One, please forgive me. Two, I forgive you. Three, thank you. Four, I love you. Five, goodbye. Which can be very hard, but when looking at the origin of the word goodbye, it means God be with ye, and that we can all say. When all is said and done, let it be said of us that we gave our loved one the best send-off possible, leaving no regrets. If you are interested in finding out more about our church, you can find us at www.stjamesucc.org. And thank you for listening.